Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video. If you follow me on Instagram, this will be of no surprise to you. I have gone down the fountain pen rabbit hole. I tried it once before, probably a year or so ago, and it just didn't stick. And it turns out, well, I'll explain that more when I talk more about my pens, but long story short, it has stuck this time and I have fully gone down this rabbit hole. It is such a problem. It is an expensive hobby. Oh my God. But I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. So today's video, I'm really just going to talk all about fountain pens. I'm going to show you my fountain pen collection. I'm going to talk about from a beginner's perspective, because that's the thing. I am still a beginner, of course. Um, so from a beginner's perspective, I'm just going to talk about the pens. This is not going to be the most, um, what's the word like professional video as far as like terms or knowledge because I am just starting out um but like I said as a beginner I'm going to tell you all about my pens I'm going to tell you what I like um and I'm going to talk about ink too because yeah I don't know I've been getting into ink maybe I'll show my I don't have a big ink collection so I don't feel like I need to do separate videos for my fountain pen collection and my ink collection so maybe we'll get more into inks at the end but we're going to start with the pens so I have two my collection has grown to 11 pens now um and let me tell you there are some sailors in the three to four hundred dollar range that i would kill for that are on my wish list but i am not there yet so most of my pens are relatively affordable i do have some sailors but i got them at a steel deal and i will tell you about that if you follow me on instagram you're probably familiar with all of this um if you don't you should follow me at amanda lee plans i will link it below i post on my stories daily and I, it's pretty much just like my up-to-date planner and journal life. Just anything new that I'm loving. Like I just, I post on stories every day. So definitely follow me over there. Um, I have two, I have my pens in two separate cases right now. This is the Galen Leather Zip and Slip. And this is in the Undyed Leather. I actually own two of these. So funny enough, so I own two of them. Which is why I have two little inserts in here. The Zip and Slip is a pouch with an insert that holds four pens and it's meant to be like this and it zips up beautifully now mine is a little tight because i shoved both in there basically what happened was i bought this zip and slip at the dc pen show let me get my actual one so i bought the galen leather undyed zip and slip at the dc pen show this is mine or they're both mine but this is the one that i bought at the dc pen show um and I saw someone selling one and I ended up buying a second one. These are only like around $40 and she was actually selling hers for 30. You can see that hers is a little more worn than mine is. It's had more time to like patina and age. Um, but when I saw someone selling it, I grabbed it just because my pen collection was growing and I really, really like this. I don't know why I like this little insert thing. Um, it, it can sit out on your desk nicely. It just kind of keeps like your pens together. I just really like it. So. I had ended up repurposing the pouch from my first one to hold pet tape samples. So that's holding pet tape samples. And basically what I've been doing is just putting both of these in one pouch. I, I mean, this is what I would do if I leave the house. I don't leave the house all that often. So most of the time at home, it's just sitting out on my desk. So it works out good for me. But yeah, this is the Galen Leather Zip and Slip. And I have my cheaper, like lower end pens in here. As you can see, I have room for two more. <laughs> and then I did go totally crazy and buy this from the Superior Labor. This is their pen case in the black pebbled leather. Um, I love this case so much because of the undyed leather on the inside. I am such a fan of the undyed leather on the inside. I think it's so pretty. I really like this like embossing design. And I have my more expensive pens in here, which includes my Pilot Vanishing Point. I have two Sailor Pro Gear Slims and then two other Sailors. Um, it's funny, my most expensive pen was actually the Pilot Vanishing Point, And I purchased that at the DC Pen Show this year. That was, I think, 160, around 150 something, this pen. Um, so all my Sailors I got for cheaper than that on Amazon. So I will go into that in a little bit. I'll start lowest to highest. Yeah, I'll do that. One more thing I'll say, the Superior Labor pen case is gorgeous, but I kind of like gagged spending this much money on a pen case, like not something I would usually do. Um, my other pen cases that I use just for like my mild liners and my Tombos and my regular gel pens 
are affordable are more affordable um but i wanted something nicer for my nice fountain pen so this was like 140 i know bum kuhen yoseka stationery a couple people carry this it's beautiful it is beautiful but it is a freaking expensive pen case so okay let's start here so a year ago I saw a bunch of people loving fountain pens and I wanted to try it out and see what it was like. So I purchased this pen right here. This is the Twisby Eco. The regular Ecos are around $35. I would say to me, so I own Twisby, Lamy, and Caveco. And I would say that the Twisbys are the best quality of all the lower end steel nibs that I've tried. Of course, nothing compares to like Sailor and Pilot that are gold nibs, 14, 18, 21 karat gold nibs. But as far as the lower end steel nibs, which this, these two are the lower end steel nibs. This is the higher end gold nibs. Uh, well, actually that's not true because these two Sailors have steel nibs, but those three have gold nibs. <laughs> Anyways, I would highly recommend if you're new to fountain pens and you don't want to spend a bunch of money and you just want to try them out, highly recommend Twisby. The more I get into fountain pens, the more I appreciate these Twisbees for the incredibleness that they are. They write so smooth and so beautifully. Um, the I have this one is extra fine. That one's fine. I prefer extra fine, but I love both, honestly. Um, the regular Twisby Ecos are around $35. The rose gold version, which I have, is $50. So one could argue that that's not in an affordable price range because I mean $50 for a pen is still expensive. Caveco Sports run you about $25 a pen. The Lamy Safari is $30 a pen and you can get a regular Twisby Eco for I think 30 or 35. And the regular Twisby Ecos are the same as this rose gold one that I'm holding. So you can pay 50 if you want the beautiful rose gold, but the regular Ecos, it's the same nib. It should be this it's same writing experience, same exact thing. So highly recommend Twisby Eco. Literally this one just has rose gold plating and it's more expensive. These are, I think what they call piston fillers, I think that or something. Um, but that means that there's no additional cartridge or converter. You basically just twist the end of the pen. It's a built-in uh, converter. It's a built-in, con I always get cartridge converter. It's a built-in converter. So you just twist the end of the pen to fill it up and empty it out and whatever. Um, the other cool thing about these Twisbees is they hold a frick ton of ink. This holds an unbelievable amount of ink, especially compared to, you know, like the Caveco converters are so small. The Pilot Con 40 sucks. So these hold a huge amount of ink. They write amazingly. I highly, highly recommend these. So the funny thing is I'll talk a little bit about, I got this pen about a year ago. I liked it, but it didn't stick because I felt that this was too thick for my everyday black ink planner writing. It was too thick for me. I typically like a 0.38 gel pen. I'm a very fine, fine, fine pen kind of person. I assumed that all fountain pens were like this. It was just too thick for me and I went back to my gel pen and this sat in my drawer for about a year. Recently when I got into fountain pens, people explained to me that Japanese brands tend to run finer. Western brands like Caveco and Lamy tend to run thicker. That is 100% true. Like these two I think are German brands. Um, Whereas like Sailor and Pilot are Japanese brands. To be honest, I'm sitting here and I don't even know what Twisby is. Is Twisby Japanese? So the way that I would describe it to me, Caveco and Lamy, well, Lamy runs the thickest, Caveco like second thickest. I feel like Twisby is somewhere in between Sailor and Pilot, which run incredibly fine. Like even Sailor's like medium fine is still so fine. So Sailor and Pilot run super fine. Lamy and Caveco run thick. To me, Twisby is somewhere in the middle. I So while I did find the Twisby extra fine too thick for my, for my everyday planner writing, and what I mean by that is like this, I found the Twisby extra fine too thick for my liking for this kind of thing. Um, I'm actually, my planner pen is actually the Pilot Vanishing Point in extra fine, and it's perfect. It's super fine. I love it. Um, that's, that's my ideal like planner pen, but I love this. I'm appreciating this pen more now that I'm getting into color ink because the extra fine, it's fine enough that I can like write an entire journal entry and it's not too thick or anything, but it's still thick enough that it does, it does color justice because if you're using color ink and your nib is too fine, it's just not the best experience. I feel like color does better with thicker nibs. 
but black ink tends to be so inky that black ink I feel like does better with finer nibs. Okay, again, these videos are all just my opinion. Please take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, this is an entry that I wrote using my, using that white and rose gold pen. This is the Twisby Eco and Extra Fine. Um, I really love it. I mean, this is a small grid insert. I think this is like 3.7 millimeter grid and I was able to write perfectly fine. This page was done with my fine Twisby Eco and even that is like perfect for me. Um, writing a journal entry, it felt beautiful. It felt, like I said, fine enough to write with, thick enough to do the color justice. I don't know why a year ago when I filled this with black ink, it just felt too thick, but it just did. But anyways, I am loving and appreciating these. I have this inked up with Lennon Toolbar in Ant Chair. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous green. Let me see if I can write on camera because I do. A, I have a really hard time doing that. Lennon Toolbar. My handwriting is going to suck because I need to get super close to the page if I want to write nicely. And I can't do that while I'm filming. So this is the Twisby Rose Gold and White Eco inked with Linen Toolbar Ant Chair, which is a gorgeous green. Let me see if I can find you a thicker swatch of it. There it is right there. So that is the Linen Toolbar Ant Chair. Tell me that green is not just like everything and more. So that is that Twisby Eco. Later on, AKA recently, I decided to buy the Smoke in Rose Gold because it is just so pretty. Like it is such a freaking vibe. And tell me these two together are just, oh, gorgeous. Um, the store that I purchased this from only carried it in fine, but I was happy with that because I was like, ooh, I can try a different one because I already have extra fine. So I was really excited to try fine. I actually also have this inked up with a linen toolbar ink. It is called Pen Fairy, and it's kind of like a purple, like a dusty purple. I should have done that. Well, I showed you a whole swatch of the other one. I don't think I have a swatch of. So there's linen toolbar Pen Fairy. There it is there too. It is a beautiful, it's a dusty purple. I mean, that's exactly what it is, a dusty purple and it is stunning. I went to go grab my inks. These are the two Lennon Toolbar inks, and this is a good representation of their colors. So they have, I think, there's the purple. See, you see how gorgeous that purple is. It's just like a dusty purple, and obviously you already saw the green, but there is the green. Highly recommend, Lennon Toolbar is becoming my favorite brand for ink. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it right now, Lennon Toolbar, is totally becoming my favorite ink brand. So, um, also just to talk about the two nibs, there's really not much difference to me. Like the extra fine is the top and the fine is on the bottom. And to me, they're like the same. I mean, I if I was like buying one fresh, I would probably buy extra fine just because I know that these don't lean as, as fine as like Sailor and Pilot. And I'm someone who prefers a finer nib. So I would buy extra fine. But as far as the two that I have, at least, you can't even tell the difference. Um, so next, I'll move into the Lamy before I do the Quebecos. This is a Lamy Safari. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. So this is the Lamy Safari. This is the first and only Lamy I've ever owned. This is in their, like, rose pink. I think it was a special edition. This pen is about $30. I saw it on Smita Paper when I was placing an order, so I decided to get it. Um, it was actually only left in stock in a medium nib. I got the medium nib, it was so thick, I hated it. So I purchased an extra fine nib and swapped it out. The extra fine's better, but Lamy, as a German brand, I think they're German, still runs like super thick. Like this is definitely my least favorite pen. I don't find this body very comfortable to hold, at least not the way that I hold a pen. I hold a pen like this. I know some people do this, maybe that would be more comfortable. But I hold a pen like this, so it's not super comfortable for me. Um, and it just runs so thick. Like it runs so damn thick. I don't, it's not the best. And I don't even like the way it writes that much. The nib just doesn't feel as nice as other pens. So I would say this is my least favorite pen. Um, I would say my order of pen favorite would go Lamy is the least, then Caveco, because they're so damn inconsistent. Um, then Twisby and then Sailor and Pilot. Sailor and Pilot are definitely the top. And that's just from what I've tried, of course. So this Lamy Safari, um, like I said, is an extra fine. 
and I have this inked with an ink that I love and it's kind of sad I almost want to put this ink in a different pen because I love it so much this is Sailor's Kitsune Biori it's kind of like a purpley pink like dusty purpley pink maybe a little mauve a little gray my Lamy is inked up with Sailor's Kitsune Biori if I say stuff wrong I apologize um I ended up buying a full I got a sample of it loved it so much ended up buying a full bottle the bottle is so pretty too I really really love this color I just like really dusty neutrals. That's probably why, I, or not not even dusty neutrals, but just dusty colors. That's probably why I like the linen toolbar. The dusty green, the dusty purple. This is like a dusty mauve. So yeah, I really, really enjoy that ink color. But the Lamy Safari, I just don't really love it. I don't really like the way it feels to write with. So I honestly might ink up a pet I like more with this ink. But yeah, that's that right there. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's not like a horrible pen, but I think there are better beginner pens for similar price ranges, such as Twisby and even Caveco. So now we get into Caveco. I have only ever tried the Caveco Sports. I do like them. I do. When they write well, I think they write beautifully. I think the mini pens are so cute. Like I said, they're affordable. They're around $25, I think. You can post them, obviously. Whoops to make it like longer, but I don't even do that because I mean, I have small hands, so I can hold it. But if you have bigger hands, you probably wouldn't be able to do that and you'd probably want to post it. But yeah, I think that Caveco Sports are really great. Anyways, I think the Caveco Sports are are great pens. I really, really do. And at $25, you can't go wrong. Um, I'm obsessed with these colors that I have. Um, I'll talk about the colors in a minute, but the only issue that I have with these Caveco Sports, in my experience, they are so inconsistent. The quality is inconsistent, and a lot of people have said that. I bought this in mellow blue in a fine nib. It, write, it wrote beautifully out of the box. No issues. I bought this macchiato in a fine nib. It wrote beautifully out of the box. No issues. But... I decided that I wanted to try out extra fine. So instead of buying another pen, I bought, because Caveco's, you can replace the nib. Same with Lamy. I think you can replace the nibs with Twisby too, but I don't know. Caveco's are so easy to replace the nib. Um, so I bought a replacement nib and extra fine, and I put it on there, because I thought, why not? I just want to try out extra fine. And it sucked. I thought that it was, it, the writing was just so inconsistent and I thought that it was the extra fine. So I went, no worries. I put the fine nib back on, which was the original nib. And then the fine nib started writing inconsistent, which makes zero sense to me. It wrote beautifully and now it writes like shit. It actually does have the extra fine nib on it still because the way that I thought is I was just like, you know, if it's gonna write like shit anyways, I might as well just keep the extra fine on it. So let me show you an example. This right here, Caveco Macchiato Fine Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour. That was it writing out of the box with the fine nib that I purchased it. Perfect, literally perfect. Compare that to that right there. Do you see the difference? Like after I switched to the extra fine nib, it started writing like this, where it was dark in some spots, light in some places. Like it just was not consistent. However, when I put the fine back on, the fine still wrote just like this. And I tried everything. Somebody suggested that maybe there's water in the ink. I let it dry out overnight. Like I tried, I don't understand. I'm still so irritated. It makes me wanna buy just a brand new pen and see how it goes. I'm only so upset because it, like, it just wrote beautifully. It was smooth, it was saturated. There were no like no skipping, nothing like that. It was perfect. And then I just had to go and mess with it and now I'm just frustrated. <laughs> Anyways, I absolutely love the colors of these. Mellow, the mellow blue is gorgeous. This is one of my favorite shades of blue. Like I cannot even handle how much I love this color. Same with the macchiato. It's just a perfect nude, like we all love nude gorgeous um and then the olive i love olive green i think this one is really pretty as well um my olive i actually purchased in a medium nib because even though i like fine i wanted to try to acquire thicker nibs in my collection for use with like color ink and stuff but when i got the medium i realized it was way too thick for me like i was not vibing with that medium so i bought a replacement nib for this one in fine and i love it now i love this with fine um, the Caveco Fine, honestly, I feel like the Extra Fine is just too, like, scratchy with Caveco. 
it's just too scratchy. It's just not good quality. The To me, the fine writes beautifully smooth and it's still fine. I mean, I use these mainly with color too, so I don't mind a fine nib. Like it's not my everyday planner pen. So the fine is smooth. You know, it's kind of like the Twisby where it's thin enough where you can write a whole entry, but thick enough to do justice with color. It's smooth. I think fine for me at least is a winner when it comes to Caveco. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think the extra fine is too scratchy. I do have extra fine on this right now. I'm just really mad because if I never messed with this, I would have three fine Cavecos that just wrote beautifully and all would be right in the world. But now I just don't know what to do. Like, I mean, they are only $25 pens. Like, should I just buy another one? I don't know. So let me write with these to show you guys. Um, oh, there's ink on the barrel of this. Um, what do I have this inked up with? I think it's the Sailor. Caveco. I always say Caveco. I'm like, my brain just went dead. Okay, Caveco, fine. This is, I think, Sailor Manio Haha. Doesn't that match so nicely? I was searching for my perfect blue because I wanted it to be the color of this pen. So I've definitely been doing a lot, like Ferris Wheel Press, Dusk, and Bloom. I got those two as samples. I got that as a sample. I've just been getting, I actually don't own any blue bottles of inks, but I have been getting a bunch of samples. Funny enough, I put the Dusk and Bloom in this pen and then I emptied it out and put the Sailor Manual Haha -ha back in without cleaning it. So they kind of mix together. And I don't know, I kind of like it. <laughs> Maybe that's probably bad. That's probably bad. Someone's gonna comment on this video and be like, oh, you did what? I didn't mean to. I just was like, oh, blue's blue. I don't have to like fucking clean it, right? I don't know, somebody's gonna yell at me for that. But I kind of like the color that it's producing. So that's my mellow blue. Let's write with this piece of shit. This is the Macchiato. Ugh, pisses me off. I really want to put, um, I have this filled with Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour, and I really want to put Oyster Hour in a different pen because, like, this is a beautiful ink, and now it's not being done justice. So as you can see, it is no longer, I mean, that is the extra fine, but like I said, even when I put the fine on it, it was still doing that. So it's like, ugh, if it's going to do that anyways... I just kept the extra fine. Um, yeah, it's a shame because I really, really love this ink. That's another thing. Ferris Wheel Press has been like my favorite ink lately. Um, I am on their team now. I don't have a code or anything. They just send me their new releases. That's it. Um, but this is one of their recent releases. It's so beautiful. I love the Oyster Hour. It's just a perfect nude. Like it really does match. I've had great luck with Ferris Wheel Press inks. They don't bleed. They don't feather. I can use them on, on Tomo River paper and they're perfect. Like I am a huge fan of Ferris Wheel Press. I think another big reason I love them is because the color options. They have a lot of really amazing color options. Whereas some fountain pen lines, I feel like only have like brights, you know, and it's like, who wants brights? Let's just look at that one more time. I am so heartbroken. I really just want to buy a new macchiato and fine and hope that it writes smooth like the original one did. So now let me do my olive. I think I have this inked up with Ferris Wheel Press. Is it Mott? Yeah, it's Mott's Part Green. Okay. So there is my olive and fine, which also writes perfectly. And this is the ink that I have in it right now, which is Ferris Wheel Press Moss Park Green. I guess I'm kind of talking about my inks as we go through, because I do not have a big collection of inks. I'm not going to go through all the samples that I have, but honestly, like, my main bottles are in pens, so, like, you're going to see them. So that's that. Now let's move on. Last but not least, I will start with my Pilot Vanishing Point. So... I use my Pilot Vanishing Point. This isn't an extra fine. I love this as a everyday planner pen. It's fine enough. It writes amazing with black ink. It's so smooth and inky and just beautiful. Um, and I got this combo from Lindsay Scribbles. She uses this pen with, what is it called? Oh, the Diatramentus Archive Ink. I have really sweaty palms. And that was another issue I had with fountain pens um, was my ink would smudge even like days later and that drove me nuts. But this ink has just been a game changer. I haven't had any smudges. Obviously it still takes a second to dry, but once it's dry, it's dry. So this is the um, 
the Deactramentus Archive ink. Highly recommend. I think that ink with the Pilot Vanishing Point is just a beautiful combo. I also like, for this being my everyday pen, that it just clicks. It's so convenient. It clicks just like a gel pen. And to me, that is like super important because taking a cap off is really irritating. So I'm writing from so far away, so it's going to look like shit. So here is the Pilot Vanishing Point in Extra Fine. It's perfect. It is perfect for me. I will never fill another pen with black ink because this one is the winner. And also the clip is where you write, which is perfectly comfortable for me. It might not be for some people, but it's fine for me. But that's because when you clip it, that way it won't leak. Although there is like a little cover that, whoops, can you see that? There's a little cover that covers the nib, um, but yeah. I like the design. I love the pen. Some people don't. I've heard some people love the vanishing point and some people just can't make it work for them, but I am definitely someone who's a fan of the vanishing point. So last but not least, let's get into the sailors. These are my two sailor pro gear slims. I am sailor obsessed at this point. I got to be honest with you. I'm sailor obsessed. I really, really want the every rose sailor. I want the Momo. I want the winter rain. I have a whole wish list of pro gears that I want. But I own four sailors and they all came from Amazon. I paid $85 for this. I paid, I think, $80 for this. Um, these two are from the same collection. You can tell by the black finials. Um, it was one of their old, like, Shikiori Seasons or something collection. I think this was autumn and I can't remember. Um, or this was, like, autumn leaves and this was, like, sky, something sky. Um, this one is my absolute favorite. I think this one is beautiful. Oh, my God. It's like an ivory base, and I just think the ivory and the black is just so chic and so stunning. These two pens only came in medium fine, but they have 14K gold nibs. Like I said, medium fine. This one is a beautiful shade of blue. It's not my favorite shade of blue. Like there are more expensive sailors that are pr prettier blues, such as like the Every Rose. I mean, that's kind of like a blue purple, but. I like that one a lot more. Um, <clears throat> same nib on this one. But I just cannot bring myself to spend that much on a pen, at least right now. And I feel really lucky. I feel lucky that I get to own Pro Gear Slims that were like 80 bucks a piece. So I do have all these pens linked in my Amazon affiliate link, which does give me a commission. But I will link it down below. So those are the two Pro Gears. And then I'll just talk about my other two sailors. Um, this is the Sailor Fashine, I think it was called. This was, these were both $50. So these were $50 on Amazon. Um, they're not pro gears. They're a different design, as you can see, like the rounded. Um, this one is white with rose gold. And these two are both fine nib and they're also steel nibs. So these are both steel fine nibs. I love them. Honestly, I love them. So that is that one. Oh my God, is that wet? <gasps> Wait a minute. I just, oh, this one's not inked up. I just remembered, but that's like weird. Oh, maybe I, so this one is not currently inked up, but I did take the ink out of it and clean it out and then close it. It looked like there was like condensation on the nib there. Oh, now I'm scared. Maybe I should let that dry out. I feel like that was forever ago. Um, yeah, but it's not currently inked up. Uh, but anyways, this is the Sailor Fashioner, which now I'm sad that it's not inked up because I love the way it writes, but I probably have a sample in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so this is a steel nib in fine. Sailor runs so fine that the medium fine is still so freaking fine to me, but the fine, I just, I love it. I love it. I love both, but I would say I love both equally. They both have their place, but yeah. Anyways, this is, I think, a Shikiori in like Cherry Blossom or Sakura or something. This was just a release. Again, I found it was like one of their previous collections, but I found it on Amazon for $50 and I could not pa pass it up. Same fine steel nib. Um, these two write the exact same to me. These two write the exact same. So it doesn't really matter. This white one is the only one I don't have inked up because I'm just... I don't have a huge collection of inks and so all my inks are already in pens so whenever i get a new ink this will be the next pen that i ink up like just whenever the day comes that i get a new ink because i don't really have anything to put in it right now because like my pen collection is growing and my ink collection is slowly growing 
Um, I do have a couple brown pilot inks, but I don't really want to put that in there because these two are already like brown colors. Um, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think, oh, here you go. So look at this right here. So I had Lady Rose, whoops, I had Lady Rose in here, but when I got this pen, I switched to put Lady Rose in here because it was pink and I just wanted to match it. I figured I could use any color in a pen that has a white body, but I wanted to use the pink and the pink body. But this was written with that white pen before I swapped them. Like it just writes beautifully. It's fine, it feels so good. Like I am a huge fan and at only $50 a pop, you can't beat it. So I'll write with this one first, like I said. Um, the white one writes the same. This one is now inked with Lady Rose and this is a fine. Oh, I just love it. Oh, it writes so good. Yeah, so good. So good. It's definitely the exact same writing experience as the white one. So you're going to get the same. So that is that. And that is Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose, which is one of my favorite inks of all time. It's just a gorgeous pink, and I'm a big fan of pink, so love that. This one I have inked up with Ferris Wheel Press Steeped Umber, which is a gorgeous, like, fall color. This is the Sailor Shikiori. This is in medium fine, which, as you can tell, it's still so fine. I mean, it's still so fine, right? I love them. The sailors write so good. They just feel so good to write with. Um, and just to show, here is the steeped umber. It's kind of just like a burgundy. Very pretty. And then this one I actually inked up today, finally, with Diamine's, what is it called? Raw Sienna. That's what it is. I inked this one up with Diamine's Raw Sienna. I will say, I did notice that this one doesn't write as, oops, this one doesn't write as good as this one it almost does that little skipping thing a little bit like my macchiato caveco so i don't know if this one's like defective or what but like i i wouldn't say don't buy the pen i think that maybe just happens and it's random i have no freaking clue um but yeah this is my number one favorite pen like it's so pretty and i'm glad that that one at least writes okay so this is the sailor yeah, you can kind of tell, or maybe not. Maybe it's getting better. Maybe it was the ink I had in it. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. Looks okay to me. Yeah, I mean, it looks okay, I feel like. That's it right there. I mean, the F is a little dark. Yeah, actually, I think it's okay. Maybe it was the ink that I had in it, but this is, I really love this ink color, the Raw Sienna. So yeah, that is that. And now I'm like concerned about this pen because of that condensation. I feel like that had to have just been from rinsing it out with water and then immediately like putting the cap back on, which maybe I should have just like let it dry out a little bit, but I'll do that now. I don't know if there's any like risk, but there's definitely like some like condensation and some wetness on that. Um, anyways, this video has been long enough. That is the end of my fountain pen video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, maybe one day I will acquire the Every Rose or one of my one of my Sailor wish list pens. But I'm really loving my collection right now. Um, I hope you enjoyed all my thoughts, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.